Hello, my name is Jenny Thorvaldson. I am the Chief Economist and Director of Data Development at Implan. And today I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about multipliers. I say more because we have a, another video that introduces the concept of multipliers and talks about the different types and some of the caveats and important things to remember um, when using multipliers and how to interpret them and things like that. And that's a little bit longer of a video and I really recommend that you watch that if you haven't already. But today I want to talk a little bit um, about the data that go into calculating multipliers and exactly how that calculation of multipliers works. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, share my screen here. And I'll start this presentation. And specifically, we're going to hone in on, I, I mentioned the data, but also how there are multiple rounds of the multiplier effect and there are leakages involved in multipliers. So those are some concepts that we didn't hit on the previous uh, video about multipliers. So just to uh, do a very quick overview to make sure everyone's on the same page, I'm going to summarize very briefly what is the multiplier effect. And it basically, the multiplier effect basically refers to the total effect of an economic activity relative to the initial effect. So an initial effect might be something like a new motor vehicle manufacturing plant uh, being built in a region. That would be the initial effect. And the total effect is more than the initial effect because the initial effect uh, kicks off ripple effects in other industries and parts of the economy due to the purchase of supplies and um, services and payment of wages to workers and workers spend some of their wages locally. So we'll get into all those details, but that's basically why the total effect is greater than the initial effect. And that's why there's that word multiplier. It's like the initial effect is multiplied to some degree to get your total effect. So the direct effect, as I mentioned, is the initial change or value being analyzed. So the term we use for that in plan is direct effect. It is the initial change or activity being analyzed. And then the total effect is the sum of that direct effect plus all the ripple effects. And there are two types of ripple effects. We've got indirect and induced. Indirect effects capture the local inter-industry effects. So basically local industries purchasing from other local industries. Think of this as supply chain effects. And then there are induced effects which capture the local spending of labor income after removing savings, payroll income taxes, and commuting. And we'll talk about that in more detail when we get to leakages. But, um, so this is basically household spending associated with the um, employees in the direct and indirectly affected industries. That's kind of multipliers in a nutshell. So how are multipliers calculated? I'm going to start by talking about the data sources. So if we're going to, um, for the indirect impacts, we need to know what industries um, buy as inputs be they goods like raw materials or services. Those are inputs into production. And we need to know that if, we need, if we're gonna be able to know which other industries are impacted. Um, and so from those, um, for these, we call them industry spending patterns. And we get them from the Bureau of Economic Analysis's <laughs> benchmark input output tables, um, more known in more shorthand as the BEA benchmark. It's a set of tables, uh, and they are released every five years by the BEA, and they are at a national level. This is where we get the um, list of commodities that each industry buys, and in what proportions, what dollar values of each of those, as well as lots of other information. We actually have a, another video about the BEA benchmark itself. So um, have a look at that if you want to get um, a greater understanding of what all is included and how important that BEA benchmark is. But that is where we get our industry spending matters. Now, since they're only updated every five years, we have to do some adjusting um, to them to get them sort of 
to fit with other data that we have and that we get at an annual and regional level. So um, basically, in, in order to understand that, I just have to briefly remind you, um, you all that output, an industry's output or value of production is the sum of the intermediate intermediate expenditures, or we also call them intermediate inputs, plus value added. And so intermediate inputs are just the raw materials and services needed to produce the thing um, that this industry is making. But in addition to raw inputs, we needed labor. And so, um, and we paid taxes and things like that. So value added is what the industry adds on to the value of just those raw inputs to make its production. So in there you have labor payments, uh, you have taxes on production, and you have profits. Okay, so total intermediate expenditures for each industry in each region must adjust, adjust upward or downward to accommodate annually updated data and estimates for regional industry output and value added. It's a lot of words, but basically what it is saying is, look, we get that IE value, the total value of IE, and it broken out into which commodities and what dollar amount for each of those commodities. We get that for each industry. So we have an IE, but that is five years old or older, depending how long we're using this BA benchmark. Okay. So it can be kind of old. And, but we get annually updated estimates for output and value added for each industry and each region. And since that equation has to hold that output equals IE plus VA, well, we have annual regional values for output and VA. And since that equation has to hold, that means that IE, intermediate expenditures, has to expand or squish. Each purchase has to get smaller or each purchase has to get bigger, depending on um, how output in that industry and region and value added in that industry and region have shifted over the years and by region. Okay, so that's why basically we get one set of these expenditures from the BEA benchmark, but the actual values are gonna vary year to year and region to region because we're adjusting to more current data and to regional data. So while we use the same spending pattern, the actual values in that pattern are gonna change every year and across regions. Okay, so that takes care of our indirect effects and the um, inter-industry spending. Now let's talk about household spending. Again, if we're gonna estimate induced effects, we need to know then how households spend their money. Again, we turn to the BEA. This time they have something called, um, um, sorry, personal consumption expenditures. I lost the term for a moment. Personal consumption expenditures. These are updated annually, which is great. So we don't have to project them at all, but they are also at the national level. And this particular data set is for all households combined into just a single household category, meaning they don't have it broken out by different uh, income groups. Well, we know that different household income groups are gonna spend money on different things and in different amounts, and they're gonna have different savings rates and all of this. So ideally, we would um, be able to break that out into different spending patterns for different household income groups. And we are able to do that because the Bureau of Labor Statistics puts out the Consumer Expenditure Survey, which has spending by various household income groups. And in Implan, we have nine household income groups for which we use these data. Now, these are also updated annually, but they are lagged a couple years relative to that current PCE data. So that's why we don't use the BELS, CES data just straight up. We use the PCE data as our control values, um, but we just split them out into nine household income categories using ratios from that um, consumer expenditure survey. So there we have our industry spending and our household spending. Now I also mentioned leakages. 
So when multipliers are calculated, it is not assumed that every dollar um, of an industry's revenue or value of production is spent, nor does it assume that the dollars that are spent or the proportion of a dollar that is spent is spent locally. And same for households. We don't assume that households spend every dollar that they make, um, earn, nor do we assume that the dollars that they do spend are all spent locally. So the things that, um, so imports and things that, dollars that just aren't spent are forms of leakages. There's also a couple others, and I'm gonna tell you why we consider those leakages. So the first is taxes. And we calculate and keep track of all the taxes the government um, that is generated associated with an impact. So we have a tax impact report. Now, what we don't have, um, what we don't do is assume that those tax revenues get respent, um, that, the, that the government spends more money um, as, as a result of the, the impact that you are analyzing. And that's because most government spending isn't directly tied to local economic activity. Rather, it's determined um, far in advance and based on many factors. So it's not a safe assumption in most cases to assume that um, government would spend more just because a auto, auto manufacturing plant came to your region. Similar story with profits. It's not safe to assume when or where those profits would be spent, nor on what they would be spent. I've already mentioned imports. We have good estimates on foreign trade and domestic trade. And so things that are imported, that's dollars going out of the local economy. So those do not generate any additional local impact. So those aren't part of the multiplier. And um, savings as well, like I mentioned, we have estimates for savings. Uh, we don't assume that households spend all their money. And then finally, something called margins. And we have other videos and lots of articles about margins on our support site because um, it is a little bit of a tricky uh, concept at first. I'm talking about wholesale and retail margins here, not profit margins, but wholesale and retail margins. And basically, what I'm getting at with this point in terms of leakages is that just because something is purchased at a local retailer doesn't mean that that thing was produced locally. Okay, so the production value can leak out of the region even though the retail um, margin stays local. I also wanted to point out there that there are multiple rounds of spending here. I'm going to. Um, I just needed to check here on my meeting, make sure it was still recording. So I apologize for that. It was beeping at me. Um, and I wanted to make sure it didn't stop recording. Okay, so um, there are multiple rounds of spending that occur when calculating multipliers. So uh, let's give an example. As a direct effect, let's suppose that a new motor vehicle manufacturing plant is going to be built in a region um, and it's going to have an output, approximate estimated output of $1 million. I know that's small, that's just, uh, um, just for our example. Okay, the indirect effect is going to have many rounds. The first round involves the motor vehicle manufacturing buying its inputs. So in this example, we're just keeping it simple and it has four inputs, tires, electricity, advertising, and paint. Well, the second round is that each of those four supplying industries have to buy their own inputs, okay? So if motor vehicle manufacturing is gonna buy more tires, well, by golly, the tire manufacturing sector needs to buy more rubber and it's electricity and accounting services and rent and whatever else it buys. And same thing if, um, motor vehicle manufacturing is going to buy more electricity or buy some electricity, then the electricity production sector needs to buy more coal or what other, other sources of electricity it might be using. Okay, and advertising services buys rent and whatever else it buys. And paint manufacturing sector is going to buy chemical manufacturing. So I'm just keeping it super simple here, short list. Okay, 
And then you could probably guess what the third round is going to involve. Each of those second round industries needs to make its necessary purchases. Okay, so the coal industry needs to buy what it needs to buy to mine coal. Um, the real estate sector needs to buy whatever services and inputs that it um, needs to be able to um, rent out a building to the advertising services industry. Okay, so this goes on round and round and round. Same for induced. I'll keep this really short because it's the same story. Round one would be the motor vehicle manufacturing employees paying their rent, buying groceries, getting haircuts. Round two then would be the real estate employees paying their rent and buying groceries and getting haircuts. And the grocery store employees paying rent and buying groceries and getting haircuts. And the hair salon employees paying rent, buying groceries and getting haircuts. Okay? And it'd go on round three, round four, round five. So when does it stop? Do we just have infinite rounds? Well, no. Precisely due to the topic of leakages, each round gets smaller than the previous. So even though each round ends up affecting a wider swath of industries, the, uh, the dollar value of each round is getting smaller and smaller and smaller because of these leakages. So in round one, some leakages would be, well, the motor vehicle manufacturing plant makes profit and pays taxes. Those are leaked out. Okay, so not every dollar that the motor vehicle manufacturing plant makes is spent um, locally. And we also, um, we also talked about imports. And the plant's employees, they, they don't make, um, get to take all their money home with them, nor do they spend it all. They pay payroll and income taxes, and they put some of their wages in the savings. Round two leakages. Um, could include things like, the, let's suppose the rubber and the coal is imported, and some, some portion of the chemicals are imported. And then, of course, all round two industries are also going to pay taxes and make profits on some, um, some form. And then all the employees of in, involved in round two also pay payroll and income taxes and put some of their wages into savings. So that's kind of how multipliers work and how they are calculated. I hope this was helpful for you, and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye now.